This is John Bailey, the epic voice of Honest Trailers, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. It's a fangirls podcast with five-ish people. The tangents and squee will continue. Squee. We continue all the way to episode 209 of the Five Ish Grand Girls podcast. The three words that best describe you are as follows, and I quote Stink, stink, stunk. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Five Ish Grand Girls podcast. So glad you joined us. Let's start off like we do every week on the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Bethlehem. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Oh, my. (laughs) (laughs) I've been having a week, but y'all don't need to worry about that. (laughs) I'm just glad to be doing this. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, my. So, all right. Well, we've got some news to talk about. So Yeah, we sure do. We are going to jump into it. First up, a... uh, guest announcement for popcorn fort wayne uh which is coming up very quickly um but taylor gray aka ezra in star wars rebels is going to be attending the event so if you're a fan of rebels which i've not seen yet it's on the list same (laughs) so but from what I understand, Rebels is really good, and people really like his character. Mm-hmm. So yes, I've seen a good chunk of Rebels, and yes, it's it's good. Yeah, and his character's great. <laughs> yeah, his character so. has really blue eyes from this picture. I don't yeah. know why I commented on that. <laughs> so I'm excited. That's um, exciting. Um, and, uh, we got, uh, thankfully, because we did not record last night, because it would have dropped probably while we were in the middle of recording, mm-hmm. but we got a new trailer for Captain Marvel. Ooh. Who knew Nick Fury was cat person? <laughs> yeah. That I'm... had me cracking up. <laughs> Like, there was, like, so many things happening that I'm like, oh, my God, this is so awesome. I'm like, I can't wait to say this. And then that happened at the end. I was like, seriously? Yeah. Nick? Out of Why? all the people to get distracted by a cat, it's him? I would yeah. like, you know, I would maybe expect a Coulson. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> but Nick Fury? What? Uh, well, he's going to be really... Uh... Nick's going to uh, be in for a surprise if he finds out that that cat's not really a cat. Yeah. Assuming they uh, they stick with the comics. Minor spoilers. You can go look up the rest and see what I'm referring to. I won't go any further. But yeah, that cat's not a cat in the comics. <laughs> so. <laughs> but no, it looks really good. I mean, a lot of the, the a lot of the clips were ones that we got in the first teaser. Yeah, um, there's definitely some new ones. This one, this one's definitely more story based, uh, get a, giving us more idea of the plot. And y- you know, not that we didn't figure it out, but yeah, definitely that old lady's a Cree. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know that, or Granny's really into like, you know, parkour or something. <laughs> <laughs> After she gets punched in the face, she's like, woo, all over the bus. I'm like, alrighty Mm -hmm. then. (laughs) Oh, oh my. But yeah, it looks really good. And um, I'm I'm actually hoping that the rumors that are going around about Avengers 4 are... I don't know. I'm torn. We, We don't normally talk about rumors. Just because they're rumors, and a lot of times they tend to be not right. 
you know, it's just fan speculation, but it's like mm-hmm. part of me really, really wants, you know, the title for Avengers four and some sort of like teaser or something. Mm-hmm. And we should be close at this point to getting something. But at the same time, I kind of want the hype to stay on Captain Marvel. That's what I'm thinking. Cause I That's- know the internet is kind of going to break once we finally get it. And I kind of want her to stay in the spotlight for just a little bit longer. <laughs> I kind of want them to do what they did with the first Avenger. They had the like trailer after, was it Captain America? Yeah. Maybe do that. Maybe after um, the end of um, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Have maybe. The trailer. I mean, like, but also that's still a long way, so I don't know. Yeah. So. Well, we'll see. If the if the rumor mill is, I keep saying different things though. That's the thing I've seen. Tomorrow, I've seen Friday. I've seen next Friday. I've seen all sorts of things. So we'll see. <laughs> Obviously, we will be posting about it <laughs> in yeah. the minute that we get anything from Marvel and or the Russos. I'm half expecting Hydra. Yeah. <laughs> So, we'll see. But uh, speaking of Marvel and things that we're not getting, apparently. Jeez. <laughs> I know. I'm just, at this point, I'm just like, just, they're all going to get axed. I yeah. just know it. They're, they're all going to get axed. If they're canceling mm-hmm. Daredevil, they're canceling all of them. So, yeah. yeah, Daredevil has been canceled by Netflix. And um, if you believe... The, you know, articles and quotes from people that don't, aren't directly connected, but they're like, I know somebody, or I've heard from people that um, Disney actually has no desire to put any of the Marvel shows on their streaming service once it becomes available. I don't know if that's necessarily the best choice business wise Mm -hmm. Uh, to me that's kind of a bad business decision supposedly there's some bad blood between execs at Netflix and at Disney blah 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 Mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot of you know supposedly blah 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 so but apparently the the Daredevil cancellation was a big surprise considering like the showrunner or whoever like went into the office had the plans like a loose plot outlined like up on his wall for season four (laughs) and then got the news that yeah no you're out of a job (laughs) so but yeah I think it's only a matter of time that Jessica Jones and the Punisher get the axe too so I don't know if they're just waiting till after their next seasons get released because they've could be. been shot you know they've mm-hmm. been done so we're def- we're definitely going to get Jessica Jones you know another season of Jessica Jones and another season of The Punisher but then they'll probably get the axe so which sucks <laughs> It really sucks. Yeah. They're good. All of them are good. Despite what people may think. I mean, they've all got their pluses and minuses. I wasn't a huge fan of this season of Daredevil. Um, it was a bit slow and a bit redundant and repetitive in spots, but it was still, they're still just, they're so well produced. They're cast so well. Um, you know, just it's it sucks because they're good, they're they're good series, and I wish people would just. Uh, it's not that they're like not getting decent ratings; it's just they're so expensive to produce, and I think Netflix has realized that their original programming. That's, I mean, they've got a lot of original programming, but original programming on stuff that they're not licensing from someone else. Yeah, you know, like Stranger Things and other programming it's like you know they're paying out the nose to produce these series 
plus license the characters from Disney. So, you know, Disney could just take them. They already own the license, so they don't, you know, to save some money right there. But then they're spending money, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm just mad. (laughs) Hashtag first world problems. (laughs) Well, let's see. Just hoping something happens. Like I've read that we might not get the shows anymore, but the characters might still show up other places. But I'm not. Yeah. Again, that's also like speculation and rumors. So. Yeah. We'll see. Well, you know, Disney's gonna be doing those. Uh, the, the limited series with the uh, characters from the MCU movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe we need to have a uh, Daredevil and Falcon. <laughs> you know, yep. cross have that. that would be interesting. <laughs> that would be an interesting team up. <laughs> oh. Oh, and, then, and to get Foggy's whole take on this. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> if they keep him. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. I'm going to miss the avocados at law. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least, at least as far as the, at least the way Daredevil ended this mm-hmm. last season, it ended at a good spot. Yeah. As far as where the characters were. Jessica Jones, not so much. Yeah. She, she was kind of in a good spot but her relationships with other people was strained uh shaky ground (laughs) yeah yeah you know luke cage they left him in a very interesting spot that i'd like them to see go further uh same thing with iron fist so i just shake my head and go what are you thinking marvel Mm -hmm. or in this case netflix yeah it's all about the dollars at the end of the day, it's just all about the dollars. Mm-hmm. Well, this idea, like, if they, they can't... <coughs> sorry. If they can't do it, like, a show, maybe, like, a comic, either, like, an actual comic book or one of those um, moving comic books. Well, I don't remember what they're called. Maybe yeah. So they have to tie up any loose ends. Yeah. They could definitely do that. Mm-hmm. Something. Give me what I want. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about me. <sighs> all right. Well, let's move on to some more news. And this is not this is not necessarily something that we normally talk about, <laughs> but just because uh, we just happen to be talking about this particular artist. <laughs> <laughs> really recently so um in, uh, in case you missed the announcement queen with mm-hmm. adam lambert is going on tour <laughs> so they're calling it the rhapsody tour mm-hmm. so for um, those of you who missed the vegas stint in september yes. here's your chance to see them again <laughs> So they're doing a tour of North America next summer. Um, so it starts in July and goes through uh, late August. So you can go mm. to uh, Queen's website for dates and ticket information. So not doing a show in Indianapolis. So. If I want to no. see them, I'll either have to go to Chicago or oh. Detroit. Mm-hmm. Maybe it would be Chicago or Minnesota. <laughs> Maybe either Philly or New York. Yeah. <laughs> Expensive. Yeah. 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 I'm not a huge fan of going to either of those locations, actually. No offense mm-hmm. to anyone listening who's from Chicago or Detroit. <laughs> uh Although I'm not familiar with the venue in Detroit, the Little Caesars Arena. I've only ever done shows at, at Comerica Park in Detroit. Mm-hmm. It's the baseball stadium. So, I've been to the United Center 
before. I'm not a huge fan of traveling in Chicago, though. No offense to Chicago, but your city is kind of hard I, to navigate. I'm I so don't blame you. Yeah. I love I'm, visiting New York, but I hate driving through it. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised that Queen didn't pick Milwaukee because they just got the Bradley Center got changed to the Pfizer Center. Yeah. And that sta- the new stadium is supposed to be just absolutely fantastic. So well, they they get get additional a- dates. Yeah, there's, there's always a chance that dates will be added, so. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we we tend to get skipped over Indianapolis, which, you know, because, yes, we can get to Detroit or Chicago or, like, Cincinnati or Louisville or Columbus, Ohio fairly easily, but, you know, banker's <laughs> life. Our basketball stadium venue, it's a good venue for concerts. I've been there plenty of time for concerts. Indianapolis is really easy to navigate. <laughs> Show Andy some love. Yeah. I mean, I may be a little biased because I live here. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I would much rather drive like 20 minutes to a, a concert mm-hmm. than several hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and not have to shell out for a hotel room. I, I see where you're coming from. I, you know, I understand. Yep. Just like come see me. Uh, so <laughs> there's that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, another uh, uh, tour announcement, which is really up our. Mm-hmm. Our, mm-hmm. our 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 uh, our uh, our venue, our uh, fandoms, is Hugh Jackman is going to go on tour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Apparently, this is something he's done before, but um, but he is uh, going to be doing uh, essentially. Like a show, like Broadway style type show with full orchestra, singers, dancers, and he's gonna be doing songs from The Greatest Showman and Les Mis and The Boy from Oz. And it's like, it, you know, yeah, this is exciting. <laughs> so, and actually, he was on the Today Show this morning. Um, I watched the, the, and he did uh, uh, the greatest show from the greatest showman, and then he did like a medley from Les Mis. Um, so, but that was really cool, and he looks really excited to be doing it too. I'm like, it, which is it's in my head. It's just like really weird to see, you know, because I've seen the greatest showman. I love the greatest showman. I've got the soundtrack. I've got it on repeat, like all the time. Same. But it's still just kind of funny to be like, he's Wolverine. <laughs> I know. I remember like. The first time, I don't even remember what it was, but the first time I, like, saw him, like, in a musical type thing, I'm like, wait, this is Wolverine. He, he, he can sing? He can sing? Yeah. Yeah. So, but this is, like, yeah, this, this, his tour is going to be, like, worldwide. Yeah, I'm looking at the shows. It's still, he's not coming to Indianapolis, Chicago, or Detroit. (laughs) I was going to say, I literally have the same choices between... (laughs) I think the- <laughs> so, oh my but this is it's really I loved though because he announced it on Twitter um, f- first uh, it, it, he mentioned it because he was on I think the Today Show actually talking about something else a movie or something he's got coming out um, and, but then he announced it on Twitter and I loved like the top comments on Twitter is people that are like if Ryan Reynolds does not you know make a surprise appearance as Deadpool at one of these shows I will be thoroughly disappointed <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so. which I don't know if Ryan Reynolds can sing or dance but you know all you need is the, the red suit and you know, some sarcastic remarks and mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I'm game. <laughs> so, 
So if anyone does get to see Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds does make an appearance as Deadpool and mm-hmm. you get pictures and our video, please send it to us. Yes, please. <laughs> That'd be, I want to... Oh, actually, maybe I can't try. Cause the, you like can the, be an unofficial we, correspondent for us five or Yeah, days. really. Mm-hmm. I was about to say, I want to try, but the weekend, because like, he's at New York in Philadelphia the same weekend... But that's like the weekend uh, right before I usually go up for my vacation. So I'm like, ooh, yeah. maybe I won't be able to do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. I imagine if anyone wants, if anyone wants to send us money, <laughs> right? Uh, the- and or you want to could, could contribute just- to the concert fund. <laughs> Or if anyone's an organizer for either of these tours and, yes. uh, you know, wants some press, <laughs> please send us an email. Have, five we'd love to have the guys on. We'd love yeah. to interview Hugh Jackman. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> you want your artist, you know, to expand their their uh, their uh, news people? outlet um, <laughs> experiences? You know. You know, anybody can do the Today Show, mm-hmm. but not not just anybody could do, you know, our podcast, unless they ask. <laughs> Please email us. <laughs> <laughs> Please and thank you. Hashtag, mm-hmm. we love you all. <laughs> Would it be too much to ask for my birthday present? Because there is a date for my birthday in London. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, I just need a ticket and a plane ticket for, to go across You've got the your home. passport, Brittany? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's until next year. you got time. time. That is true. That is true. I have six months. <laughs> Plenty of time. If anybody wants to send us with Brittany. <laughs> yeah, because she, she shouldn't have to travel alone. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Like, Again, email us. <laughs> and we're still waiting for that red carpet invite to the Avengers 4 premiere. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Five ish at Avengers 4. Hashtag. Use it. Uh, <laughs> we just want to get invited to stuff and have someone else pay for it. <laughs> Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Certainly. Probably. <laughs> Quick, someone. Can you just imagine how awesome that Someone tag you, Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> he's got some pull. I know he's not part of the MCU, but yeah, he could get us a up for all sorts of things. I mean, <laughs> soon, maybe. Uh, maybe. Oh. Things still going on with the Fox, right? Like, they're still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. All right. Hashtag first world fandom problems. <laughs> Moving on. Yep. That's it for the news. So uh, we are in a new month. So, yep. bit of housekeeping. There was a tie for our books. So, the winner for this month is the Twice Upon a Time. And then January's book will be the 12 Weeping Angels. And then in January, we'll be posting the February book choices. So we'll have our choices of the 13th Doctor, because by that time, all the 13th Doctor books should be out for uh, physical copies. And yes, for those of you who are wondering about the Tom Baker Scratch Man, that is being planned to be put on either February's or March's poll. Just depends. As of right now, the... Physical release date is the same as the electronic release date, but sometimes that can change. So <laughs> I'm waiting till it gets closer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good idea. <laughs> or if anything else happens to pop up between then and now. <laughs> then, yes. Now and then. So, yep. That's the status of the book club. Yep. Always prepared for surprise book announcements. Again, we're yes. looking at you, Candy Jar. We love you. <laughs> but you're very proficient at publishing things. Real quick, speaking of Candy Jaw, 
I don't know if you guys get the emails, but they're doing like a, a, what am I thinking of? Like a 12 days of Christmas or like an advent calendar? An advent calendar. And it's like, so far it's been like free um, downloads of books and um, it, um, then there was this like a wallpaper for the Lucy Wilson. Yes. 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 Cool. Mm-hmm. It's pretty interesting. Like I've, and it looks like even if you've missed some of the days, you can still get them. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Well, moving on to. This week's topic, which actually was the brainchild of Brittany. Yes. <laughs> and I didn't get to do anything that I was planning to before we talked about this. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. okay. I did a, I did I did some research, so Yay. we'd have some uh some interesting factoids to uh go with our general discussion, but uh since it is December and Christmas is coming, mm-hmm. whether we like it or not. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, I have, you know, four days into December as we're recording this. I actually have a lot of my Christmas shopping done. Yay! Which nice. is an accomplishment for me. <laughs> See, so. I have zero. I have ideas, <laughs> but nothing <And> physical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although at this point I'm waiting for most of It's all been online so I'm waiting stuff to come in Through the mail mm-hmm. But some of it has come in And until our tree fell over earlier today I did have presents underneath the tree <laughs> But then our tree took a nose dive Like it was trying to run away from The topic don't even of this week I know oh, and I know Rachel, <laughs> the good thing was, is it didn't start spinning. Well, yes, that's true. It, it just fell. Spinning, it didn't you would have been in a world of trouble. Yes, that is very true. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was, you know, if it hadn't been, it was somewhat horrifying and uh, amazing to watch and somewhat amusing because it did conjure up images of the movie I saw yesterday <laughs> we'll get no, into artificial but or real tree it's artificial okay yeah <laughs> yeah I mean still bad but <laughs> yeah yeah could have been a lot messier yeah. <laughs> could have been real. no we don't do real trees sorry uh but <laughs> anyway could have been doing a Clark Griswold with the set <laughs> yeah but like, why is the floor, why is the carpet wet, <laughs> Todd? <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know, Margo. Margo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. We've got the crazies today. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, anyway, being Christmas, um, we always, we, we try to come up with something Christmassy to talk about this time every year on the podcast. And uh, we thought that... Uh, what would be better than to talk about one of the most recognizable and famous figures in all of Christmas lore and entertainment and media? You, you see him in pictures and movies and those blow-up things people put in their lawns. He appears at, at theme parks. Um, there, there's no mistaking that, uh, that, uh, that red jacket and matching hat with the, uh, white fuzzy trim, that sleigh mm-hmm. that he, he uses to travel in and his oh so vibrant green fur. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, yeah. not Santa. No. The Grinch. <laughs> Yeah. I knew where you were going, and I'm just trying yeah. my hardest not to look out loud. And, and, and his lovable companion, Max. <laughs> yeah. And in yeah. the newest movie release, he gets a secondary companion, Fred the Reindeer. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, sorry, Santa. You're 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 so typical. Uh, and you didn't get a new movie this year, but the Grinch did, uh, which I did see yesterday, and it's adorable. 
<laughs> I had watched one video trying to, uh, I watched some YouTube videos uh, when doing research about the history of the Grinch and all that. And one of the videos I watched included the guy's review of the new movie and he hated it. <laughs> Which that was before I'd seen the movie, and I was like, oh, well, that's not good. But then I went and saw it, and I'm like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This is hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've like a lot of I laughed. I a lot. Heard, <laughs> a lot of complaints I've heard that this Grinch isn't as mean no. as the other ones. No, I, I have not seen the Jim Carrey version. I, I feel like bits. <laughs> I kind of refuse to. Just because it just it seems wrong to me. Yeah, and I, there's bits that I've I have seen of it, and I'm like, no, like like some of the jokes are just not appropriate. Give, give me the cartoon version with Boris Karloff, and then I'll, I'm probably gonna make good intentions of going to see the remake. Yeah, in the yeah. theater. Yeah, the the new one is it's really good. The the CGI. The characters look really good. Um, the I don't like the new version of the song. Uh, is <laughs> the it the one that mean, you hear? Is it the one that you hear the trailer? Uh, I don't know. I don't uh, remember. It kind of it kind of sounds kind of hip hop ish. Yes. Yeah, it's like a hip hop version of your mean one, Mr. Grinch, which I did not care for. Um, they do have the other song, the Who song, which is still pretty traditional the way, mm-hmm. you know, it sounds in the in the the Boris Karloff version. Um, and then they use some popular music, too. Um, and both popular, like, pop music and uh, other Christmas songs, <laughs> including one of them, like, as a flash mob, which is hilarious. Mm. It's so hilarious. It's like a caroling flash mob, and the Grinch gets stuck in the middle of it, and his reactions to it are just that's, so that's, that's hilarious. Like I, I can kind of imagine it and the look on his face. <laughs> oh my! No. Like, I mean, the get story. Get me out of here! What yeah, did I get I mean, myself into? Yeah. I mean, the story is still the the story you would expect. You know, his heart is is two sizes too small. Um, you know, he hates Christmas. He goes to steal Christmas. There's Cindy Lou Who, um, but they definitely expand on the Grinch's backstory. They give Cindy Lou actually she's adorable. Um, <laughs> she becomes like a major player. <laughs> She gets a lot more to do because I mean this is a feature length movie. It's ninety mm-hmm. minutes, so okay. they 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 definitely need to flesh it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, and there's new characters that are introduced. Like I said, Fred, <laughs> the reindeer, <laughs> um, which I think he appears in one of the trailers where he's uh, playing with the the can of whipped cream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's coming one. out of his nostrils. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I remember that. That's for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They enter and they there's they they flesh out the Who's way more in Whoville. Um you see way more of Whoville um and get to know more of the townsfolk. Um cool. you get to meet this this Who and I can't for the life of me remember what his name is. Um I should look it up. Uh but he's this who that he is um he's like the biggest fan of christmas like think of your friends and odds are you've got someone in your in your your social circle who's a big 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 fan of christmas (laughs) like you know watches christmas like this hallmark christmas movies all year round Starts decorating the day after Halloween, you know, bakes cookies like they're going out of style, Um, (laughs) you know, just everybody knows someone who's just a huge Christmas fan, you know, Mm -hmm. loves decorating, all of those things. 
that's who this guy is. Um, so if this guy got invited to the North Pole to stay, he'd be sign me up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but he is. <laughs> he. Um, for some reason, he thinks that he and the Grinch are best friends. The Grinch doesn't see it. The Grinch doesn't see it the same way. <laughs> but for some reason, this guy thinks that he's the uh, he is uh, Mister Bricklebomb. That's that's the the who's name. Anyway, he's voiced by Keenan Thompson, and it's hilarious. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> if Keenan Thompson was a cartoon character, it would be this guy. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, this, this is hilarious. Uh, uh, and then Max. I love Max in this version. He's it's so cute. Mm. I know they've got uh, Funko Pops of oh. the like young Grinch, mm-hmm. and then they have a Max. I may need to get the Max Funko <laughs> just because Max is so mm. cute. And the, with his the Grinch's relationship with Max is kind of where you see where they've decided that to make him like not as mean. Mm-hmm. Like he's definitely grumpy anytime he has to. You know, encounter the Who's. He has to go into Whoville to go to the grocery store. We've seen that clip in the the trailers too, where he takes the lady's jar of pickles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like anything related to Christmas and the Who's. He's definitely a big old grump. Mm-hmm. His relationship with Max, though, he's definitely softer. Yeah, he's a big softy when it comes. He's to he's, a, he's kind of a big softy when it comes to Max, which actually I think is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, because yeah, don't be mean Carl- to your animals, people. Don't be mean to animals in general. Yeah, because yeah, in the Carlos <laughs> one, he was kind of not so nice to Max. Yeah, yeah, he's he's way nicer to Max. I mean, there he's still there's still some moments where you know he and Max like get annoyed with each other. Oh, yeah, but he, he's definitely nicer. And has a soft spot for Max, which I think is adorable, actually. So I kind of wish they went into the uh, uh, how he got Max. Because <laughs> even though we get some Grinch backstory, it's back to when he was really little. Um, so I, I would, st- I kind of would like to see some Max and Grinch backstory, like how he got Max and that sort of thing. But, you know, sequel, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Um, and he's uh, the Grinch. I don't. He's like a genius too. Like he kind of, he's like doctorish. Uh, <laughs> he comes up with all of these gadgets and pieces of technology to help in his stealing of Christmas. So, because like in the Car- Karloff version, like he he does everything pretty much manually. He has mm-hmm. like a magnet to help like pull out tacks. To mm-hmm. steal people's stockings, um, but in this, he's like James Bond with the tech. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got these crazy candy canes that can do all sorts of sorts of things. Yeah, I've seen like um, the, the commercial. Like he has candy canes, and like he can shoot nets out of them. Yeah, yeah. He, it's like it's nuts, and he's got <laughs> like he's got this workshop in his in his you know his his home up in Mount Crumpet. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just kind of crazy. I'm like, you know, it's like, yeah, he hates who's in the Christmas, but dang, he's smart <laughs> to come up with all this tech and, and, uh, technology and, and stuff to, to assist him. It's actually pretty wild. So he also has an organ that he plays, cool. Ooh, which is kind of funny. Yeah, hopefully you reckon because they they uh, you know because one of the the recurring themes is just how alone the Grinch is, you know, and how he, he's supposed to be happy being alone. Yeah, you know, the obviously other than having Max, uh, and uh, cuts to him playing the organ in the song. <laughs> it's a very popular song. It should be recognizable. <laughs> Quite funny. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that works. 
That makes sense. So, uh, but yeah, no, it, it's really good. It's adorable. I mean, it's not anything groundbreaking. Um, like I said, the, the story is, is pretty much the same, you know, uh, you know, it ends, <laughs> you know, with the, with the Grinch, just, you know, this heart growing three sizes and him giving the Who's all their stuff back and everybody, you know, being all happy at Christmas. Um, but it's just, it's done very, very well. It's, and it's, I laughed. There's some very funny, funny pits. So, and um, Benedict Cumberbatch, he's a good Grinch. I mean, Yay. I would not know that was him if I did not know that was him. There's a few times where his the, he, he's got some inflections in his voice where they're, they're very Benedict Cumberbatch. Mm. Um, you know, it's especially, you know, well, you know, if you've ever listened to Benedict Cumberbatch talk as himself, you know, he sounds a certain way. Sherlock, he sounds a certain way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, when he uses actual accent, in this case, you know, he's, he doesn't have a British accent, but still, he's got certain ways that he just kind of pronounces certain vowels and mm-hmm. things that are just very Benedict Cumberbatch. But otherwise, I would not know that that was him. Yeah, and like the the trailers I've seen are like, I know it's Benedict Cumberbatch, but I can't really recognize it. Like, yeah. So. Uh, okay. Okay, I meant to go see it, but I haven't yet. Yeah. Well, if you get the chance, go see it. I mean, you don't need to run and go and, and see it if you don't want to. You know, if you don't have the time. But um, but it is a it is pretty cute though. Uh, so, and there's, there's no post-credit scene, but if you want to stay during the credits, because they, they do a bit, uh, they do a bit of, um, I guess more character development, I guess, okay. during the credits, so. Interesting. And they playing with actual credits themselves, like his stuff appears on the screen, they make it disappear with certain things. So, and characters. So, uh, I kind of like how, like, nowadays, especially with like the, I guess, not necessarily kid movies, but family movies, mm-hmm. that it's not just white letters going up a black screen, they, they tend to have more. Things going on. Yeah. Like, I, I saw um, Re- Re- uh, Ralph um, Breaks the Internet a couple weeks ago, and the entire um, credits was all colorful and looking for Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. It. I got to find time to re-watch, re-watch wreck it ralph first oh yes <laughs> yeah it's been a long time mm-hmm. so yeah ralph breaks the internet it's really good yeah there's two from what i understand there's a, there's a lot of references to wreck it ralph so mm-hmm. want to make sure it's fresh in my mind first mm-hmm. yeah <clears throat> ralph breaks the internet so yeah. but yeah, no, you're I, shaking I, your I, head at the last know. end credit scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one, that yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> Brittany knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, as soon as I can get, as soon as I get a chance, and then I can get to the movie yeah. theater, I will go mm-hmm. see it. So, mm-hmm. anyway, back to the Grinch. Well, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, there hasn't been a, a Grinch movie since the Jim Carrey version nope. um, and that was several years ago so mm-hmm. it's, and it's been was... a while and it and an animated version makes more sense because mm-hmm. it's cheaper and you're not going to have your lead actor want to kill himself uh, <laughs> or quit on the very first day like Jim Carrey did mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> I did. I had not realized uh, chest. Um, I mean, I I know that prosthetics. Um, it's any type, uh, yeah, especially something that extensive is a laborious task. I mean, I've watched the behind the scenes stuff from Lord of the Rings a lot of times. So I know what, you know, some of the people with the more elaborate, uh, prosthetics had to go through as far as time in the chair, you know, what time they had to get up, having to, having to sit still for so long and that sort of thing. Um, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me that what Jim Carrey had to go through to become the Grinch when filming that movie would be pretty labor intensive, but apparently he was not aware of just how extreme, I guess it would be. And they had to bring in a person who, I guess they were like former FBI or something. And, uh, was familiar with like, um, torture essentially it had to like teach Jim Carrey like coping mechanisms to be able to handle this sit in the makeup chair for so long to have wow. the Grinch makeup done Yikes. because it was yeah because it was messing with him like from day one <laughs> like he wanted to quit on day one <sighs> just because of the prosthetics <laughs> and the makeup <laughs> so I heard I uh once I heard that I'm like Alrighty then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, I mean, you know, I'm not the... I don't like sitting still for very long, but, uh, you know, I'd like take a nap or something. But. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't allow him every half hour or so to get up and have a walk stretch break. Yeah, or something. Well, yeah. Who knows? I don't mm -hmm. know. But, uh... But yeah, other than that, we've got the, you know, the classic How mm -hmm. the Grinch Stole Christmas, the the, the animated, yep. uh, which Dr. Seuss didn't want to have done originally. Wow. <clears throat> he didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't think it was going to be very successful. So, um, but uh, he's convinced otherwise. <laughs> and, well, I mean, uh, it, even, it even gets the nod in Home Alone, too. <laughs> yeah. And then we get the superimposed Tim Curry over the Grinch's smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, the Grinch as a character um, goes back to uh, well, the, the Grinch uh, a character with the name the Grinch. Uh, first appeared in a poem by Dr. Seuss in 1955. Um, and um, it kind of evolved into the book that, or yeah, the book that was published in 1957. Um, Actually, it was published as a book and then also in an issue of Red Book magazine hmm. <laughs> in 1957. Um, so, um, and as of 2012, it's ranked as number 61 among the top 100 picture books mm -hmm. yeah, by I the have, School Library Journal. Yep, I have the Spanish version of that I read one year to my, the Spanish class that I was working with. They enjoyed it. <laughs> well, according to um, uh, biographers, um, even though the book was written in the midst of um, founding uh, beginner books and... Um, his wife having um, health problems due to a stroke, um, that it was actually the easiest book of his career to write except for the ending. Wow. <laughs> so, um, according to Dr. Seuss himself, he said, I got hung up getting the Grinch out of the mess. I got into a situation where I sounded like a second-rate preacher or some biblical truism. Finally, in desperation, without making any statement whatsoever, I showed the Grinch and the Who's together at the table and made a pun of the Grinch carving the roast beast. 
<laughs> I'd gone through thousands of religious choices, and then after three months, it came out like that. <laughs> Which, you know, they all lived happily ever after. Why yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. let's see what else do I got here? Um, well, according to, oh, excuse me, according to uh, Dr. Seuss himself and his, um, some other writers and even his, um, stepdaughter, the Grinch is, uh, very much a, a, uh, aspect of Seuss's personality <laughs> uh, kind of a, a Dr. Jekyll Mr. Hyde type thing um, according to uh, an article in Red Book uh, Dr. Seuss says I was brushing my teeth on the morning of the 26th of last December when I noticed a very Grinchish countenance in the mirror it was Seuss so I wrote about my sour friend the Grinch to see if I could rediscover something about Christmas that I'd obviously lost <laughs> Uh, his yeah, his, his stepdaughter, um, Lark, said in 2003, she said, I always thought the cat was uh, Ted, his name was Theodore, was Ted on his good days, and the Grinch was Ted on his bad days. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently his car, the license plate, read Grinch. Uh, let's see. In 2002, TV Guide ranged, ranked The Grinch number five on its 50 greatest cartoon characters of all time list. Ooh, that's, yeah. that's pretty high. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure a certain mouse probably ranks a little higher. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably a certain mouse and a certain rabbit. <laughs> They're really mm -hmm. high up there, probably. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, and obviously, the Grinch is a, a icon of Christmas, which, when you think about it, is hilarious considering how much he hated the holiday mm -hmm. <laughs> until his heart <laughs> grew. Um, and he is very much, uh, um, uh, seen a lot of places especially at Universal Studios both in Florida and in California they do uh, hula days and Grinchmas at theme parks um, which I will post links to some videos of uh, some folks um, Tim Tracker who actually we talked I think we mentioned when we were talking to uh, Jacob Carpetbagger um, he is based in Orlando, so he goes to the uh, Florida theme parks quite a bit and has been to Universal a couple of times uh, to uh, see the Grinch, which makes sense because the, uh, well, even before the movie that was just released, um, but even more so now because the new movie was done by Universal and Illumination, which is the same company that brought us the Minions, who also make an appearance at the oh. Universal Parks. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, so it makes sense. Um, that and the Jim Carrey was version is a Universal production as well, I believe. Um, so, uh, but I will put links to Tim Tracker's uh, videos where he went for immediate preview Um before Grinchmas started, um, and they did, they got to see some of the show. Um, they got a stage show where they do, you know, a shortened version, musical version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, um, which is, I think, plucked somewhat from Seussical, which is a bigger Broadway production, which is a mixture of several Dr. Seuss stories, but of course, the Grinch is included. Um, and then the Grinch is a meetable character. Um, at the Universal Parks, he's very popular, <clears throat> just like Santa, of course. Um, and then they have, uh, you know, the, the employees dressed as, as who's. Um, I have a friend. Uh, I will also link to um, Adam the Woo's video that he just put up in the last couple of days where he went to 
Grinchmas out in Universal Hollywood. Um, and it's really <laughs> funny because um, he he's towards the beginning of his video. It's a little after the three minute mark. He's standing there enjoying a band uh, singing uh, some Christmas songs. It's like a rock band and they're they're doing some Christmas songs and he's just kind of standing there, you know, watching the band and the crowd, you know, is, you know, bobbing their heads and singing along. And there's a, a universal, I'm not, I can't point to calling them cast members because that's what Disney calls their employees, but I don't think that's what Universal calls, calls them. <laughs> I have no idea what Universal calls their employees. I really should ask. Uh, but... <laughs> Um, there's, uh, 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 I'm just gonna call him a cast member because that's the verbiage I know. So there's a universal cast member, uh, standing there. It's a guy dressed as a mailman and, uh, the band like finishes their song and the, 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 the guy is like, well, you know, like super excited, you know, cause the, the, the live music, that's a friend of mine. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> It's a friend of mine. He's a former Disney cast member. He moved out to L.A. to become an actor. Uh, but uh, to, uh, you know, during the... Uh, he also works at Universal part-time. <laughs> it just so happens he ended up in Adam the Woo's video. <laughs> I was watching it. And Adam, he goes from the band and he pans over to this, this you know, who mailman, you know rocking along with the band and hollering and hooting. I'm like, wait a minute, I know that who. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to send the link to him. I like, sent him the link on Facebook. I'm like, dude, I saw you. You're on the internet. <laughs> like, I know you. But that was just kind of funny. It's like, hey, random YouTuber that I watch happened to be in the right place at the right time to catch someone I know. <laughs> While they were at work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Uh, but, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and Universal, at least in Florida. I have not been to the Universal out in California so, for so long. So, I have no idea what their, uh, their park is set up like. But, um, it, at least in the Florida park, they have an entire land dedicated to Dr. Seuss. So, and the cat and the hat and all of those, those characters. So, um, I'm assuming they have something similar out in Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> I believe they do. That would make sense. Uh, so. Yeah. The Grinch. Do you guys have any memories of the Grinch? Now, is that like, you know, something... Yeah, you know, that you always maybe like sat down as a as a family to watch on the TV. Or... Yeah, um, it's actually my dad's favorite Christmas movie, the, the original cartoon. So we always used to watch it every year, and always we would read the short story all the time. So it was definitely part of my Christmas traditions as a little kid. Like yeah. he was. It was so funny when the or the Jim Carrey movie came out. He was excited and until he started seeing like the trailer. He's like, "Oh wait, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> staying away." <laughs> Which is this abomination? Exactly. He's like, "I like Jim Carrey, but no." Yeah, yeah when it comes to a lot. I mean, when it comes to, well, when it comes to just movie adaptations of the Sue stuff, they haven't necessarily been that successful. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen the Cat in the Hat one either. Like, yeah. I, that's no, Mike no, Myers. And I, I yeah. love Mike Myers, but th this doesn't look like, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, when it, when it comes to live action, they definitely don't quite seem to hit the mark. <laughs> so... <clears throat> but even in animated, because they made a, a, there was a feature length animated version of the Lorax, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't it, seen it. It, did, but... it didn't do too well, I don't think, if I remember correctly. No. I, I, I don't, 
you know, I don't know what the, what the, you know, why that is. I don't know if it's just because the Seuss books are so short. Maybe. That could be. Yeah. Because I, I, there's a, a YouTube video I watched. I'll have to, um, I have to find it again and, and link it in the show notes. But it's like 107 facts about the Grinch or something like that. And one of the facts was that if if the book was adapted um, just straight up as is, it would only be like 12 minutes long. I used to when I was little. I used to have like this VHS tape. It had like a short story. Uh, it had. Um, Dr. Seuss stories, like, had Cat in the Hat, had mm-hmm. um, Hop on Pop, and all those stuff, and they were, like, mm-hmm. only a couple minutes long, mm-hmm. so, like, but I can't really imagine, like, I mean, you, they've obviously did them, but, mm-hmm. they also did, um, oh, which one, in, um, was it Horton, he has, he has a Who, isn't that yep. a, mm-hmm. that's the feature length, which, and I think they, I saw they, that one time, and, and then they did a mini, I know they did a cartoon, a short, you know, a regular short cartoon version of it, too. Because I vaguely remember seeing that one. Because I love the Lorax. And then I remember, yeah, almost, yeah, every Christmas we pull out the, the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> Watch that. Well, there's a there was a um, the the original Grinch cartoon was so successful that they ended up making a a second cartoon that is actually a prequel to the Grinch, where it's the Grinch with Halloween, where he tries to steal Halloween. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, I never heard of it. I, I did not realize that they that they had made it. and apparently it was fairly successful as well. So, <clears throat> oh, hol- a- it's apparently called Halloween is Grinch Night. Mm-hmm. Came out in nineteen seventy seven. Mm-hmm. Huh. I I might want to watch it. I don't know if I want to wait till next Halloween because I'm, yeah. I'm I'm intrigued. Well, I, have, I don't know where you could find it. I don't know if that's something you could find on on YouTube or not. I think I see a link that's on YouTube. Yeah, it looks like, I don't know if it's what we walk, but I see something linking to YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So if anyone wants to watch that, <laughs> you know, I guess if maybe if you're one of those people that, you know, is excited for Christmas but still can't quite give up Halloween, there you go. Mm. <laughs> There's your happy medium. I mean, you tell the night before Christmas. Yeah. Well, that's true, too. <laughs> but if you want more Grinch. Yeah. Huh. I'm intrigued. I am, too. Uh-oh. Yeah, the Grinch is just one of those characters that I has just always existed at, when it comes Christmas time. Mm-hmm. So, I've... I've have I don't know the first time I ever, you know, ever maybe read the book or saw the cartoon. It's just one of those things that you know it's Christmas time. It's like oh the Grinch. That's a that's a thing. That's part of the holiday. So, oh. and of course you know you got to sing along when the whenever you hear the song, either when you're watching the cartoon or if, you know you happen to have Christmas music on, and it comes on. You, know, you, oh, heard, yeah, you like hear I, that you hear that opening drum beat, do, 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 you know. <laughs> you kinda you know. I don't know about everybody else, but I you know, kinda puff up, you know, puff up my chest and kinda dig deep for that low thorough Ravenscroft. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, baritone, like a mean one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grinch. So anyone know the Disney connection? Uh, nope. <laughs> I was like, do I? To that, to that song. Oh, to it's the like song? One of those, mm-hmm. Well, I should, not necessarily the song itself, because the, actually the, the lyrics were written by Dr. Seuss himself, actually, to the song, but. Yeah, uh, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, uh, Disney Connection. 
Yeah. It's one of those, like, you know, six degrees of Kevin Bacon type things. Oh. I I wouldn't wouldn't know. The singer, Thor Ravenscroft, is the uh, uh, very famous Disney voice. Hmm. He is the uh, voice of the narrator in the Haunted Mansion. Oh, cool. Oh. This is quite the narrator. He's definitely one of the singing busts, and he's actually he's actually one of the singing. Uh, he's one of the voices of uh, the Yoho uh, Pirates Life for Me song in Pirates of the Caribbean. Cool. Oh, in the attraction as well. So he was. He, and other bonus fact: Thor Ravenscroft also the original voice of Tony the Tiger from Frost oh. and Flakes. <laughs> That's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that's why I'm always always amused when I go to uh, uh, Disney, and I can I can hear you can, if you go on you know the Haunted Mansion or Pirates of the Caribbean, and you get to the singing, and you just hear that that deep <laughs> that deep voice of his, and you can just pick it out, and then like ah, throw Raymond's Croft. Uh, <laughs> I know that voice. Oh. By the way, that's like a really awesome name. I love that mm. name. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. Thrall Ravenscroft. I mean, if that's not like, you know, a gothic name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm like, I, I look should be ahead of a Hogwarts house. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Look at look at him. He's definitely someone that grew up in the forties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's done quite a few of the Disney attractions. Mm-hmm. Or- Always the narrator in the story and song from the Haunted Mansion, but not the actual, like. But he's definitely one of the singing busts, <laughs> and definitely in in parts of the Caribbean. So if you if you're on Pirates of the Caribbean, and um, when you get to the uh, town uh, where you can start hearing the song, and there's the Pirate singing with the donkey <laughs> braying along is one of the voices coming from one of the, those pirates. But it's, 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 his voice is just so distinct that you can easily pick it out among anybody else, you know, that's singing along with him. So, because it's so it's so distinct that deep that deep voice of his. So, apparently. He was in this American variety show called Donnie and Marie. Mm-hmm. It, he was Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he can't he get James could... Earl Jones, hey, yeah. he's a good substitute. Yeah. I don't know if James Earl Jones can sing. <laughs> <laughs> he might be able to. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out when the Lion King comes. <laughs> yes. I will get a chance to sing this time around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. He's also in the animated adaptations of The Hobbit and The Return of the King. <laughs> he was nice. goblins. Uh-huh. Right. Sorry, I went on a little <laughs> Google yeah. black hole thing. <laughs> Thank you, Wikipedia and IMDb and the internet. <laughs> yep. Thank you for your never ending well of knowledge. <laughs> oh. That's a little bit of trivia, you know. You can stick in your back pocket there, you know, if you're ever in a trivia night and they're like, who's the voice of 
the original voice of Tony the Tiger. And you could be like, throw Ravenscroft. If you ever get a chance to be on Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That I too. know that fact from the Five Fan podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you can have that one for free. Just remember us. Mm-hmm. You can send us some of your winnings via <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> Here we are trying to get money out of our listeners. <laughs> yeah. Anything else mm. about the Grinch? Not that I can think of. It's a stable holiday season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has the has the the cartoon been on TV yet? Anyone you know? I don't watch. Um, I haven't watched TV in so long. This not year, that, not that I, I'm aware of. No, because I have a Christmas search on my, for my TV for my guide, and I pull up to see what's coming up for Christmas, and I haven't seen The Grinch listed yet. Okay. But I'm certain it's it will be coming soon. Oh, I'm sure it's it should be. Indie season. Yeah. Yep. It should be soon, I would assume. Check your lo- local listings, folks. Yes. According to this really quick search, uh, it's going to be on TBS December 9th. Oh, so that's coming up. But it usually gets shown on network TV, too, mm-hmm. like ABC or something like that. I would think. So what... Uh, Universal. Which one's that? Is, I don't know. Top of my head. That would be NBC. Yeah. So more than likely, I don't know who actually owns the broadcast rights to. Oh yeah, that's the original, right. The original be. cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> one of those channels, though. Check your local listings, folks. Check your TV guide. That's still a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It looks. It, it, it's still. It's saying TV CBS, TV. like the original. The original broadcast was T- CBS, mm-hmm. but that was obviously like years and years ago. So I don't know if yeah, the same or not. Because mm-hmm. the the Halloween one aired on ABC. Oh, it did. Okay, according to tvguide.com, we actually missed the first airing. It was on NBC November 23rd, and don't worry, it's going to be airing again Christmas Day, December 25th at 8, 7 central. Ah. Here's an interesting thing. There's a cartoon called The Grinch, Grinch, Grinch's The Cat in the Hat. Yes. I- Vaguely remember that one. Which it was a crossover and, nobody knew they wanted. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> if I remember correctly, there was some sass being thrown back and forth by the both of them. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine that. Was that. Quite good. <laughs> yeah, it aired yeah. in 1982. It won two Emmys. Huh. Uh, this is something else I've never heard of. <laughs> Which apparently I should have because it aired on ABC Family's 25 Days of Christmas from 2011 to 2013. So, like, it's not like it never played again. Mm-hmm. Again, probably can be found on YouTube. <laughs> probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the likelihood, yes. Most definitely, probably. <laughs> oh, that's what I think about the Seuss stuff. Is it's fairly accessible. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've done they've done a good job about uh, not sticking it behind a 
big old paywall or something. Mm-hmm. Probably considering the Grinch and uh, like uh, other uh, Seuss, uh, <laughs> especially the Grinch. Because hey, the Grinch is a uh, is a uh, a uh, a uh, kind of a, a alliteration about uh, the dangers of commercialism. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, if any of our listeners have any uh, comments they want to uh, leave us, or maybe you got a story about the Grinch, you know, you, have you met the Grinch? It, you know one of the universal parks or you got a cool family history story to tell or something. Um, or you just want to share your thoughts about the Grinch or maybe Dr. Seuss in general. Um, you can uh, send us feedback. The easiest way to do that is to visit our website, which is the five com. from there. You can send us an email or, um, Hit us up on one of our other social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can get a hold of us that way. There's also links to the Goodreads Book Club. So if you want to go vote for uh, a book or, mm-hmm. you know, you, you know about some publication, you know, go leave us a, a comment and Holly can look into it. Yes, please. <laughs> um, so you can do that um, if you want to financially support us, because, you know, we haven't mentioned that enough this episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you can do so uh, by becoming a supporter on Patreon. Um, you can financially support us on a monthly basis for as little as $1 a month. Um and we would greatly appreciate that. Um, if you uh, uh, wish to um, uh, support us in other ways, you could also use our Amazon affiliate link. Um, so if you're doing uh, your Christmas shopping, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Festivus, you need a new Festivus poll to set up so that you're ready for the airing of grievances and the feats of strength. Mm-hmm. Um and you're going to buy it off Amazon, <laughs> you can do so um, uh, on uh, by clicking that link on our website. It takes you to Amazon. From there, you can shop. And uh, we just get a small kickback from that. It doesn't cost you any more. Um, you can use Amazon gift cards to pay for stuff if you're a Prime member. Um, you can use that. Get that free two-day shipping. Everybody loves free shipping. Um and, um, again, it financially supports us, um, which, again, we are very grateful. If you want uh, merchandise with our lovely logo on it, um, you can do that um, via the link on our website as well. We have uh, stuff you can purchase on Redbubble, shirts, cell phone covers, stickers. There's a lot of variety. Um, I got a, uh, a sweatshirt, um, with the Black Friday, uh, sales with our logo on it so that I've got something nice and warm to wear when I go to PopCon in Fort Wayne here later this month. And it's really nice and it's really warm and I really love it. (laughs) Um, and it came really quick and it's a really good quality. And, um, I really enjoy it. I I got it. I opened it and I immediately put it on. (laughs) So, uh, that's, uh, that's saying something, I think. (laughs) Um, and of course, you know, anything you purchase, we will get, uh, a little bit of money from that. So, um, and, uh, as we were, uh, <laughs> uh, or if you just want to get a hold of us, you know, and invite us to something, 
<laughs> yeah, red carpet premiere for something. You want to fly us to London to go see Hugh Jackman? Yeah, as long as we can work it into our schedule, mm-hmm. we're uh, we're game. I I got a passport. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I'm not uh, opposed to uh, traveling. <laughs> I got a suitcase and a passport and a teddy bear. That's all I really need. Mm. <laughs> well, I have two, well, one and a half of those things. I need a new suitcase. <laughs> Mine, I've had for like 15 years, and it was my mom's before then, so mm. I kind of need a new one. Yeah, yeah, new luggage, need to get the passport renewed, but yeah, it can be done. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it in the works, so just haven't finished filling out mm-hmm. forms because I'm lazy. Uh, all right. So there is uh, that a little bit of housekeeping um, as we wrap up here as the <laughs> as the year <laughs> is wrapping Holy up. Holy cow. Yes. <laughs> 2019 is less than all the way, people. How is that even possible? Possible, yeah, I know. (sighs) I know. So, um, just a a heads up for folks. Um, We should, uh, barring any (laughs) any unforeseen uh, circumstances, um, uh, we uh, we should be good. Uh, for uh, shows for at least the next few weeks. Uh, so um, if you want to jump into the conversation uh, next week, uh, we should be talking about, and this is, I can't believe we're saying this too, season 11 of Doctor Who, which will be done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the season finale is this Sunday as we're recording this, which is nuts. I know, yeah. like I was watching the, like I knew that it was, the end was coming. But I didn't think season. it was that fast. Yeah, like, yeah. I, was, I, was watching, I, I was watching swear the, the season just started. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching the latest episode yesterday and the commercial was like, the season finale next week. I'm like, wait, no, what? Yeah. That's not possible. Yeah. It just, it just started. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we will be talking uh, about uh, Jody Whitaker's first season as the Doctor, giving our opinions on mm-hmm. how the season went. Um, and then the following week, uh, we will be discussing uh, a certain nanny who is practically perfect in every way, and in some universes may or may not be a Time Lord herself. Uh, <laughs> Which is kind of appropriate, actually, when yes. you think about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we may right. be talking a couple of time ladies over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. There's been theories, and I have to say, I have proven those theories wholeheartedly. <laughs> but yeah. that's next week. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so she is also getting a new movie coming out in a few weeks, so... Um, and then after that, uh, because of the way the calendar falls, <laughs> yep. Christmas, and, or, yeah, the Christmas essentially and New Year's uh, fall around the time that we would normally uh, record. Um, but uh, because uh, a lot of people will be traveling and spending time with their families, um, we are going to likely take uh, those two weeks off. Um, so, of course, I will be at PopCon Fort Wayne in the middle of that. Um, if I get any sort of audio from that event, uh, stay tuned, because those may that may end up going in the feed as a little extra squee just to uh, tide everyone over. Um uh, so that there's something <laughs> in, in the feeds while you're out and about, uh, you know, over the river, through the woods to grandma's house you go. Um, so um, we'll, we'll see. I have no idea what what is going to happen at this version of PopCon because it's it's only two days. It's a lot smaller, um, you know, 
uh, lot lot scaled down. So who knows what's going to happen mm-hmm. with PopCon? Uh, it's always an interesting. I, I just tend to go into PopCon with whatever happens, happens. I'm going with the flow, and some very interesting things usually end up happening. So we shall see. And then we'll be back in after uh, after the holidays in 2019 to discuss the Doctor Who New Year's yep. special. <laughs> That's so weird to be saying New I Year's know. special instead yeah. of Christmas special. Yeah. Yeah, it's like if Doctor Who was having a Christmas special, obviously we would be talking about that. We'd find time to record mm-hmm. and put up that show. But since it's not Christmas, it's on New Year's Day, so that that kind of throws a wrench in uh, things. But at the same time, it's kind of good because then it frees us up to, mm-hmm. you know, spend time with our families. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, like, like the boys were talking on on when it was announced, and I kind of agree with them. Like. Christmas Day, I'm the only one in my family that watches Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. So, like, I have to try to find a way to, if I want to watch it when it's on, try to find a way to get away from family. So, that kind of makes it a little annoying. But New Year's Day, everyone's done, usually done partying because it's the night before that's a big celebration. Yeah. So, you, New Year's Day, I'm usually home. Yeah. And depending on how hard your party on New Year's Eve, you, you may end up sleeping most of the day away and wake up just in time for the doctor's special. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you might be <laughs> you might be hungover. <laughs> You're like, I get up the, for the hour for Doctor Who and go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't party that bad, but I yeah, I don't either. That. Me either. I not. Uh... Uh, these days, I'm lucky if I stay awake till the ball drops. <laughs> yeah, usually like, it's I, I did it last year, but that was, was like the first time I did it in quite a few years. Yeah, so. uh, uh, aren't we exciting? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. See, we need some excitement. Hugh Jackman, hook us up. All right. Anyway, <laughs> or Ryan Reynolds. Um, we won't judge. We're not going to be picky. Nope. nope. Uh, all right. Uh, before we really dig ourselves into a hole with our fangirl pleading, let's sign off for this week. <laughs> Brittany Bella saying good night. This is Sally from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. But this, this sound wasn't sad. Why? This sound sounded glad. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. You have been listening to the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. You can find more episodes and information at the fiveishfangirls.com. Any and all books, movies, games, and any other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. If you wish to support the show, the easiest way is to leave us a rating and review on iTunes. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at patreon.com slash fiveishfangirlspodcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to keep the show going. For official Fiveish Fangirls merchandise, visit redbubble.com slash people slash fiveishfangirls. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fiveishfangirls. Thank you so much for listening and may the squee be with you.